yep, there I am. Um, so I'm going to ramble here just for a few minutes. We're a few minutes early. Um, we'll get into the content. Uh, well, a little, little after one, I'll, I'll ramble a little bit. Um, just if you're just coming in, I, I'm all alone here. We're doing the social distancing thing. Um, I'm controlling everything myself here. Uh, so I got some other cameras you can take a look at. There's, there's, there's my Peroni <laughs> that I'm going to have when this is all done. And uh, in honor of our friends over in Italy, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, that. Um, and the flow control device. Again, we're all about the flow today. I'll we'll go through, through how to, come back to me, go through how to calibrate that, um, how to uh, use it. I'm going to do a couple demonstrations. I'll pull a couple shots. I've got uh, kind of a regular Italian style bean blend and also a uh, Ethiopian yogurt chef coffee. I'm going to pull like a normal shot without flow control and one with flow control, a profile that I like for the coffee and see how that does. Um, I see we've already got some people joining us. Uh, Ed's there. Oh yeah, shout out to my moderators. So we got uh, Nick, Ed, and AJ. Again, all off-site. They can handle some of your questions. Um, I see Alex is already asking, when are you going to make the flow control available to those who already own a machine? Um, we, you know what? They've been in such demand. They're so popular that the supply hasn't kept up with demand and they're coming out of Italy. And right now, actually just spoke with Michael Hawk of ECM Profitech this morning. Um, they're just waiting on the pressure gauges that come with them, um, which is a problem because of what's, what's been going on in Italy getting those. So uh, let's see, we're, we're, at, we're at one o'clock. So let me, let me just start. Uh, we're not gonna get into content for a second here. I do have a lot of notes, bear with me. Hopefully, technically everything goes well. Um, but so again, I'm Mark from Whole Latte Love. One man band today, I'm controlling the whole show. Uh, so I've got some cameras here that I can switch to. There's, there's the flow control device and that pressure gauge. There's another shot. When we do some extractions later, you'll be able to get a good look at those. We'll talk about all the equipment that I'm using here. Um, again, if you have the questions, use the offsite, uh, or the offsite moderators can help answer those. Um, of course, I will, so if you ask a question, uh, if you're watching this live or after the fact, I always monitor those YouTube questions and comments and, and I try to respond to everybody <laughs> with a really detailed answer. Um, also, I know a lot of you might have come to us from Home Barista. A big shout out to Dan over there uh, who's helped us. We, do, there is, we have a thread in the Marketplace forum which has, I think, a link to the, the video, the live stream we did a, a couple days ago about dialing in grind. Um, you can also ask questions there. I've, I've started to get more involved with that. I've really paid more attention to YouTube for a long time. Um, literally thousands of comments and questions every year, so I do appreciate those. Um, especially now, you know, it's really nice to have that contact. Um, down in the description, before we, in the description of this video on YouTube, I, I put in a few links. So, number one, I had done a video, I gotta get a drink here. Number one, I had done a video with five different flow profiles. I'm going to do a couple of those today. We'll, do a, we'll pull a shot normally, and then I'll use a profile that I really like with either the Yurgachev or the, or the Italian bean blend. Uh, but down in the description, there's a link to that video with five different flow profiles, basically starting points for you to use flow to get more out of a coffee. Also down in there, uh, I was in, in Milan at the Profitech facility. Uh, almost two years ago, but I did speak with Michael then, um, and I really, I'd love if you would watch that. Michael is really one of the true innovators in the espresso industry, um, with stuff like the flow control, some of the things he's done with uh, some of his other machines that we've worked very closely with him on. Uh, so do check, check him out. You know, Profitech, they, uh, they've been around since 95, um, and they, they have some history prior to that as well. Um, but Michael, Michael's a great guy. Um, his machines, I, I love his machines. If you look around our channel, you'll see a lot more uh, video where we go inside these machines. When you look inside these, uh, they, they stand out. They, you know, they, they do local repair over in Europe, um, and they've really set up their machines. You know, these will go 10 or 20 years. They've really set up their machines to be, number one, really reliable. Uh, we'll talk about some of those innovations coming up, um, but also really easy to, to work on. Um, so thank you, Michael, for that. Also down in the down in the description here, in this for this video, 
There's a link to an article from uh, Daily Coffee News that was written by Howard Bryman um, with the origin story of how we were involved, uh, especially Todd here, who's, uh, who's really responsible for a lot of those innovations and working directly with manufacturers. We talk to him all the time. You know, if you have thoughts on what you'd like to see in a machine, um, there's things that we've helped develop with uh, Proftech and ECM, some really nice stuff. So, but let's, let's get into the content. Let's, you know, what, what am I gonna go through today? So flow control, you know what? It really opens up a whole new way of working with coffee. Now, I've worked with many, many different machines. I mean, there's 50 or 60 of them around, around here. Um, different styles of machines from levers. We have Dalla Corte Mina, uh, which is a flow, a really high-end flow control machine, and a lot of other ones. And with putting a flow control on an E61 group machine like this, it just really opens up a world of possibilities. You know, if you're working with a super fresh coffee, and we'll talk more about this, you know, you can do that really long, low flow pre-infusion. You can really tone down the brightness that you typically get with those. If you have a, an older coffee or a darker roast, how you can work with those and get more out of them and not have that bitterness that you usually get with some of those if you're, you know, you end up over extracting it. Um, but really, you're able to modify your extractions. I, I mean, of course, there's grind and dose and timing and all that kind of thing. Um, but with flow, you're really able to do so many more things. So we'll get into that. Um, let's see. Uh, other things you can do. So yeah, I mentioned you could, you could mimic a you know a lever shot if you want. You can also do coffee shots if you check the link down there. You know, I pull a like a six ounce just regular you know drip or filter style coffee using flow control. Um, so some of the things we'll go over. I'm gonna. The big thing we're going to do today, well, I'm going to do those two extractions and compare a normal extraction to one with flow control with those two different coffees. That'll be towards the end here a little bit. I'm going to show you how to calibrate because what you want to know is where your flow is. We'll also talk about, you know, where should you run this, the flow device here, if you want to just do like a, a normal shot. Um, and there's some stuff you should know about that. You know, I've gotten some comments from people, I just run mine wide open. Well, there's a pretty good reason why you don't want to do that. Um, so again, we'll do that calibration. Um, so the extractions again, I've got um, some Yurgachev, some Ethiopian Yurgachev. This is a high altitude specialty coffee. Um, you know, you're going to get the tropical fruit flavors off of this. Um, I know AJ, who's moderating today, he's doing a long term uh, thing right now, video working on 30 days of extractions and see how the, you know, the extractions change over time because they definitely do. Um, so, I'll, and again, I'll do that with a profile I like for this coffee. This one's a little, this one isn't exactly fresh, but it's still really good coffee. And you can still get a lot out of it. This one's, let's see, this one's about four to five weeks off the roast. So it's a little, not quite as fresh as you'd usually want to do one of these coffees, but you can still get really good stuff out of it. The other coffee, you know, if you know my videos, I've worked with this Italian bean blend. This one's 20 or $10 a pound. Um, it's Maroma's Orphea, one of my longtime favorites. And I've got a profile with this that just gave me flavors that I had never gotten before, so we'll do that. Um, so that's it. Let's talk about the equipment we're using. I'm going to switch over to another camera here to get you a little bit closer. So we'll go over to where my Peroni is there. And you see right next to the Peroni, that's, that's my treat after this is done here. Because uh, I'm going to be drinking a little bit of espresso and I've already had a little. But what you see here is the the flow control device itself so it's just this it's um, the pressure gauge that you get here that's going to go on the group we'll get a closer look at that in a minute and this which just it's a valve up in here one thing to notice with Proftech and ECM is they use uh, stainless steel mushroom um, you know if you've ever had one that's chrome uh, and taken it apart you, or you got some silver flakes in your coffees a lot of times the scaling on something like uh, the mushroom valve, a chrome mushroom valve, uh, it, it can flake off with the scale. Um, so stainless, that's one of those innovations that Michael has made. Um, over here, the two grinders I'll be using today. So I have over on the right, it's a Chiado E37S. And I'll give you a closer look. So it's got this nice touch screen. It's got the quick set gear here. Um, it's a worm gear setup. Chiado hates it when I say worm gear, um, but that's how, how that works. Um, it has three uh, grinding presets. I'm going to be using this one at 3.7 seconds. I've already dialed this in 
uh, for the most part for my coffee today, that 3.7 seconds is gonna, I'm gonna be doing a 20 gram dose. I'll be using that, I have the Orphea coffee in there. Then over here we have the Chiato E37 SD. So very similar, but as you can see here, this has like the bellows and it's just on and off. Um, so we'll do single dosing on this. And this, if you do it right, we'll talk about RDTing. I've got a little RDT sprayer, the Ross Droplet Technique, which is gonna help reduce um, any uh, static that you have with your coffee and make sure you get everything out of there. Uh, what else do I've got? Well, this, this comes with that uh, SD. This is a, so if you're grinding for other brew methods other than espresso, it's got a little cup here that sits right inside the forks. Really cool, so you can grind right into that. Um, then if you're, you know, if you're going into a portafilter, uh, this little dosing funnel for the portafilter. Um, I'm also going to be using, I'm going to be weighing my doses for the single dosing. I'm using an Akaya Pixis. So this little guy right here. Actually, let me turn that on while we're here. Um, and I'll be weighing my coffee in there before we grind it. Uh, so let's see, we got the grinder and that. Okay, so here's the Pro 700. Really, really nice machine. So this is something, if you, listen, if you check out that link in the video, um, you notice that this runs real near two bar of steam pressure. So uh, the best steam pressure in the business on this type of machine. This is a dual boiler. PID, you can see I've got the flow control installed here. Again, it's got the group pressure gauge, uh, the flow control right here. Now, I've equipped this earlier today. Um, I have some special equipment. So I use this uh, silicone gasket. This is a <laughs> Cafe Works gasket. It's a little, little more supple than the standard hard rubber ones. So really easy to get in and out. And I like the way that a portafilter locks in against this because it's got a little give. I took out the shock or the stock shower screen. If we can get up under here, I'll show you. That is an IMS Precision Nanotech screen, and you're going to see in a minute when we do some of the calibration just how beautiful the flow is out of that, how it distributes really, really nicely on top of your puck. Um, also on the Pro 700, of course, you'll get the uh, you'll get uh, automatic shot timer here. Um, you see, I'm running 200 to 201 for my coffees today. I'm I'm kind of Generally, maybe go just a little more with the Yurgachev and maybe a little less with, the, uh, with that Italian-style bean blend, but we're, I'm kind of compromising for that today. Um, on the Pro 700, these awesome, awesome sprung valves, very low wear, um, very little turn. Let me get the scale out of the way here and let you see that. But you can see it's like, how far am I turning? And that's full on, it's like a quarter turn. Now, I'm very easy to operate with the springs in there. So that's the gear also for, uh, for doing our calibration to find out what our flow rates are. I've got a cup here. We're going to weigh our water as it comes out. If you can't weigh, that's okay. You can do it by volume. Um, I do like using the scales. Um, let me just turn this one on so it's ready to go. Okay. So that's going. I'm going to go back front here. Thanks for bearing with me as I run this show myself. Get another drink of water. Mmm. I'm really looking forward to, to this guy. Believe me, Todd's not going to like that when I drink that, but too bad, Todd. <laughs> so, uh, what else? Let's see, again, I'm going to be doing 20 gram doses. I'm using, oh, in my filter basket, I'm going to use a uh, 20 gram uh, Barista Pro basket. I do like these baskets. Um, no internal ridging. You know, I don't know if, how big a deal that is. Let me show you that. Oh, did I? Nope, there's back. So let me show you, get you a close-up look at that. So no internal ridging. It does have the nanotech coating, which is a quartz coating, which helps keep it clean. Um, that's the same thing that you're going to get uh, on that shower screen. So coffee is, you know, doesn't stick to it nearly as much. The oils don't build up. They're really, really easy to clean. Oh, and there's my little setup, so <laughs> I can see you guys, what you're saying. Come back front here. Uh, so, got the, let's see, we talked about the RDT sprayer, we'll see that in action, but let's get into the calibration. So first of all, let's talk about, and I wish I could show you these, if I had somebody else here helping me produce this. So I have, I've done a lot of testing with uh, the flow control to see the flow rates, what they are, where, you know, if you want to run your machine 
kind of like stuck, like, you know, it just had the normal mushroom valve on there. Um, I've done a lot of testing. So, for instance, on the on a Pro 700, which is a rotary pump machine, the stock flow rate out of that with uh, your standard mushroom valve, like this guy right here, that's, that's the stock mushroom valve. Um, the flow rate out of that, it's, uh, being super accurate, I get 11.2 grams per second. Um, and I did, I used a Pro 500, I think, the other day for, for uh, my dialing in video and that, yes. And that is a vibration pump machine and stock flow rate out of that is about 7.8 grams per second. And I get that and we're going to go through and, and show you how to measure that. So um, let's go do that. I'll switch over to this other camera here. So I have, I have uh, an Akaya lunar scale here. Um, and I have a Pyrex cup. So right now, oh, a couple, a couple things first that you should know about this. So you can set this, right now my valve is fully closed and I like it at this three o'clock position when I'm fully closed. And when we calibrate, what we're gonna do is measure the flow rate at each quarter turn to get an idea of how much flow you get at each spot. Um, one thing to know about this is you can position this anywhere you want. So I'm gonna kind of do that. So you can pull that right off. You can loosen the knob here, pull it right off, and put it anywhere you want. So if you wanted zero flow here, you can do that. I like mine at three o'clock. Um, so you do want to make sure before you tighten this down that it's fully closed. And you can even leave just a little space in there, then turn that knob to tighten it down. So right now, I'm going to just move the scale out of here just in case. So if I pull the lever, um, I get no flow whatsoever. Okay, so I'll turn that off. So what we're going to do is go put our scale under. I've got this uh, lunar scale set up to auto tear. So if I give it a second here, it should tear. There it goes. Then I'm going to open the valve a quarter turn. And what I want to do is find out how much. I'm going to use 20 seconds. That's what I use. Typically, I'll measure for 20 seconds at each quarter turn and get a flow right there, write that down, uh, and do it that way. And it makes it really easy because I've got the timer here on the machine, so I know when I'm hitting 20 seconds. So I'm going to let the water go for 20 seconds and weigh the result. So I'm just going to turn the machine on. And I like to do this three times just to be sure. Um, so you can see that's a very low flow right now. And I'm at 12 seconds, 13, 14, 15. 18, 19, and 20. So my final weight here was 37.8 grams. So what you do is you take that and divide that by 20, and then you get your flow rate per second in grams. Now, if you don't have the scale, it's a little harder to accurately measure the milliliters of water here, but you can just measure the milliliters of water and do it that way. Now, I typically do this three times. Now, this machine has been sitting for a little while, so my flow rate initially was maybe just a hair low. So if I do it three times, I'm going to average those. So I'll take, I'll test three times at each position, total up the total weight, uh, divide that by three, then divide by 20, and you're going to get your flow rate per second. Um, so if we continue on here, now I would go to a half turn and do the same thing. So I'll let this run for 20 seconds, and I'm going to write down the weight. And to be really accurate, I would do this, you know, three times. Um, I found it, it's very, very consistent um, time to time, so long as the machine hasn't been sitting for a long time, 18, 19, 20. So I'm at 20. I got about 69.4 grams. So doing some quick math, that's about three grams per second at the half turn. Yeah, it might be a little different the next time I do that, but I'm going to average them all out just to get an idea. So I continue around and do that at three quarters of a turn, one full turn, one and a quarter, one and a half. Now, I mentioned earlier that you probably don't ever want to run this wide open. And again, I wish I had somebody else here helping me with a show, but here's the graph of my results. And I don't know, that's going to be kind of hard to see, but you can see it's pretty linear up to one and a quarter turns. In one and a quarter turns on this Pro 700 with a vibration pump, that gave me 10.9 grams per second, which is 
really is right on with what you get from the stock mushroom. So if you want to run this normally, or at least in my situation, uh, it's one and a quarter turns. So I go to three o'clock and then to here. Now I'm at a stock flow rate. And that's what, I'm gonna pull some shots later with stock flow rate. But what happens when you keep opening, you start going beyond the stock flow rate to if you go two full turns open, you're running at almost three times the stock flow rate. You're almost, you're almost at 30 grams per second. So let me, let me just show you what that looks like. We'll also, we'll get a look at uh, the distribution. I really like this uh, shower screen that's in here, the distribution from that. So let me get the other camera back here. And I'm gonna bring it in close. And so this is the stock flow rate. And look at, the, look at the nice even distribution from that shower screen. Now, if, with a stock shower screen, what you're gonna see is usually just a single uh, stream coming out. But you can see how nice and evenly that's distributed. I'm gonna stop this for now. And I'm gonna dump this, so I left my dump bucket over here. Let me grab that. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> But I want, I want you to see what happens when you start and run this machine wide open, which you really don't want to do. So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to go two turns on this. One, two, and watch how, much, how fast that water comes out of here. I mean, it is just jamming out of there. That's that near 30 grams per second. It's still really nice flow out of that shower screen. But as we bring it back, I'm going to bring it back here now down to nothing. So that's how you do, again, measure at each quarter turn. I, like I said, like mine at this, uh, my zero right here, and then quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn. And then one and a quarter for me on this Pro 700 um, gives me like a stock flow rate. So if I just want to operate normally, just leave it there. And we will be doing that in a second. So let me get rid of this. We'll bring, us, bring you back over to the, oh, a couple other things. I, I do have this Pro 700 plumbed. It can run from uh, reservoir or plumbed. I've got this fun line over to our supply over there. Um, and I'm running, it, I'm running it through a BWT Best Max Premium filter. Uh, next week, I'm going to do a live stream on water filtration. It's very important. Um, the filter I'm using, you, I'm going to come back to the other screen here. With the filter I'm using, uh, you will not develop scale in the machine. Also, you're going to get rid of the chlorine. It also comes with a uh, valve to control pressure. So I'm running two bars of pressure into this machine, um, which you can use that because like the Pro 700, this isn't true of all machines, but the Pro 700 and their ECM Synchronica, which is identical internally to this machine pretty much, they are open to line pressure. So you don't want to be hitting it you know, if uh, at two bar you're 30 PSI, you don't want to be hitting it with full ho household pressure all the time anyways. But using the uh, pressure control valve, I'll talk about this in a live stream next week, you can control a uh, line pressure pre-infusion. It's pretty cool stuff. Um, so that's what's going on there. And I'm just going to take a look if that has more pressure than my shower. Okay, I'm just taking a look at the questions here real quick. Uh, da, 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 da. You are not on iPhone view. Hmm. I'm just looking through. So it looks like we got a, we got a lot of people here. Thanks for watching. Um, so next up, let me check my notes here. Uh, so we ran through the calibration. Let me just make sure anything you know anything else we should be talking about here. So never run it wide open. Uh, like if you have a Pro 700, you're probably about one and a quarter turns. Um, if you're going to do that calibration again, measure, measure how much you get in 20 seconds. You can do 30 if you want, and then just divide by 30. I found I'm pretty accurate at 20. Um, oh, another thing. I have this machine plumbed, like I said, feeding it with two bar of pressure. Um, there was no difference. I did some testing uh, yesterday to see if there's any difference in the flow rate if I was running from the reservoir versus the plumbed in connection, and they were essentially the same. Um, I checked that all the way up to the regular standard flow rate of the machine at one and a quarter turns, and it was identical regardless if it was reservoir or fed from the plumbed-in line. 
Uh, so there we go. So let's get into pulling some shots. So I'm going to switch view over here. We're going to start with the E37S with the Italian blend. Um, I do have my valve set at one and a quarter. So that's the stock flow rate. Again, I'm using a, I'm going to use a 20 gram dose in that 20 gram barista pro basket. And I've already, I set this up earlier. That's 3.7 seconds on my uh, Chiato E37S to get the 20 grams. This has been sitting for a little while. Oh, I left, that's still kind of warm. Um, we'll have to deal with that. Not as warm as I'd like. I should have left that in there. Uh, what I'm going to do is a little bump and dump because there is some, you know, old coffee in there a little bit. And if I just jump out of that and back to here. So we'll go back. I'll switch the camera view here. So there's, there's my 20 gram dose. I, I love this grinder, how it distributes into the port of filter. It's very, very nice. Smooth that out a little bit. Now I'm going to use a leveler. This is um, the Jack Leveler. If you saw my live stream the other day or if you've seen my other videos, I've been using these for about a year. Some people tamp after using this. I don't really find it necessary if it's adjusted properly with the right amount of coffee in the right basket. So here we go. So I just drop that in and drop and spin. Now I did dial these in earlier. So hopefully we're in the ballpark. So we'll see what we get here. Uh, I'm on the right camera. Good. Okay. We'll lock that in. I am going to weigh the shot here. Uh, so I've got a shot glass. I've got my scale set to auto tear. I'm not going to do any of the standard preview. We're just going to run this. I'm just going to pop up the lever and pop it down and see what we get here. So I'm looking for 40 grams. We'll taste this. That looks not bad. So Orfea is really amazing coffee. I mean, check out the, the crema on that. It is an Italian bean blend, so it does have some robust in it. A very nice one. I'm at 30. And we'll cut it there. So maybe, you know, I could, I could have ground maybe just a little bit finer. I, and I'm just three grams over, and I think we were at about 21 seconds on that. But I am going to give this a taste. So we'll bring back over here. We'll give it a little stir. Try not to make a mess. You know, it, it, it does, it honestly does taste um, a little bit under. Not bad, um, but we'll live with that. So now, what I'm going to do now is do a flow profile that I really like with this. So what I'm going to do is simulate a lever shot. Um, this is one I did, uh, if you check out the video down on the link, where I did the five different shots, five different sort of shots with that. Let me get to my little chart here. So this is a lever profile. Again, I would love to show you this uh, as a graphic, but I'm kind of short staffed here. Um, so what I'm going to do here is on, on my thing, based on the flow rates I'm using, I'm going to let that pump run for three seconds at one turn. So I'm just going to set that now to the one turn now so I don't forget. Then I'm going to totally close off the flow for five seconds, just let it sit. Then I'm going to take it up to one and a half turns, and then I'm going to just gently ramp it down to kind of like the easing of the pressure uh, on a lever shot and flow. So we're going to see what this is. I did this uh, a few weeks ago in that, in that video that's linked. And man, I got stuff out of this coffee, this Italian bean blend I'd never tasted before. So let's do that. Let's get things cleaned up here a little bit. I tend to get a little messy here. <laughs> I do like a clean port of filter. Okay, so, and I'm not changing the grind at all. As you work with flow, you can definitely, you know, change your grind as you taste different things. So, we'll just put that in. Let it grind my 20 grams again. I'll take it back over here. So, you can see that. Just, a, again, beautiful distribution. Make sure my leveler's clean. And this leveler works really, really nice um, in the Barista Pro baskets. They, they fit just perfectly. So you do want to make sure they're clean. And again, using this, I'm just going to give it a spin. And once I'm spinning freely, I'm pretty good. Clean that up a little bit. We'll put that in. Uh, I'm just going to wipe off my scale here a little bit. Okay. Again, I've got this set to auto tear. Hopefully you can see the scales here and stuff. So I'm going to do the three seconds, 
at the one turn, my, my scale has teared. And then I'm going to shut the flow off for five seconds, and then I'm going to take it up to one and a half turns. So let's see if I can make all that happen. So one, two, three. You can see the pressure just started to build there. Then I'm going to go to eight here, then bring it to one and a half. So there's one and a half. And now I'm going to start ramping it down. And what you can do, now I'm going to try and ramp it kind of continuously all the way down till I hit my target weight, which is 40 grams. And one thing, thing that's really nice, if you notice things are going a little too fast, you can always slow it down here. And there we go. So I hit, uh, I got 41.2 grams. I'm really excited to taste this. Let me bring it back front. I'll grab that, give this a stir. And what I got out of this was just flavors I had never gotten before. Oh yeah, that just sweetened it up a little bit. Um, also a little bit more, a little bit more mouthfeel. And no bitterness at all. What I've what I found, you know, a little piece of advice is working with, you know, coffees that the ones that aren't really depending on being super fresh or darker roast is that um, a lot of times I got another profile that's just hitting it really hard at the start and then just kind of ramping down, not doing that pre-infused thing. Um, so that's that. Now let's get on and we'll do the, uh, we'll use the uh, Chiato E37 SD. And I'm going to, so we're going to single dose that. So I'm going to weigh my coffee. This is the Ethiopian Yurga Chef. So I've got the little Pixis scale over here. I've got this little Akaya dosing cup that I really like using with this. You'll, you'll see why in a second. So I'll get my scale over here. And this one I don't have set to auto tear, so I'll tear that out. It's zero. And I'm going to go with 20 grams here. So we will sacrifice no beans <laughs> using the single dosing grinder. And I'm at 19.85, one more, I'm exactly 20 grams of coffee there. So with this, I'm going to use um, this little RDT sprayer. So that's Ross Droplet Technique, if you're not familiar. This is going to help make sure all the coffee gets out of there. It's going to reduce any static in there and help the coffee flow through a little bit. So I'm just going to give this a check my spray. Give that a little spray. I like to stir and shake it up a little bit. Nope, let me get my porta filter here. Whack that puck. Clean that out. Okay, now I also have the, uh, the little dosing funnel here that I'm going to use. So with this, this, is this grinder is just off and on. So I just turn it on. You can barely hear it. This is an 83 millimeter uh, grinder. Let me see, maybe get a better look here. So I'll put you over there. Um, and then just dump the beans in. Oh, let me bring you back front here for a sec. So why, why I like using this little Akaya cup here is it fits right on top of the little bellows here. So you just listen to make sure all the beans are ground, you give it a few taps and it blows out any remaining grinds. Bring it back here. Okay. I'll turn that off, move this out of the way. We'll just settle that in a little bit. There's that coffee. Uh, where's my leveler? So I'm gonna level this again with a with a leveler here. Oh, you know what? I did realize with this coffee earlier I have to go down really nice with this leveler. It's very easy to adjust. I need to go down about three clicks. I'm also going to make sure that's clean. Oh, went an extra click. Settle that into the coffee and just lightly spin as it drops in. Clean that up. That's beautiful. Perfectly flat every time. So I'm going to open this up to uh, my standard flow rate, which is going to be one and a quarter turns. So I'm going to go, there's one and then to 12 o'clock. So this is a normal shot as you get if you didn't have flow control. Now we'll compare that against a profile that I really like with this coffee. Let me bring it back here. Lock that in. And notice, you know, another thing, I didn't have to purge the, uh, 
the uh, SD at all, that single dosing grinder. Get that set up, and hopefully, hopefully what I dialed in earlier stays about the same. I did have this dialed in pretty good. And we'll see what we get here. So we're about halfway through at 12 seconds there. Again, I'm going for 40. It's starting to come a little faster. If I was actually flow controlling this, I'd probably slow it down a little bit. And we ended at uh, just 20 seconds. Um, so actually, you know, my grind, if I was doing this shot, I'd want it maybe a little finer. But I'm going to give this a taste. Bring it back here. And that's, I mean, that's a totally different coffee than the Italian bean blend. Um, I am getting, I am getting the, uh, the fruit and, the, you know, a little extra brightness out of that. Um, but let's say it's maybe not as sweet as could possibly be. So now we're going to use the flow to try and sweeten this shot up a little bit. And I'm on the right camera. Good. So we'll knock this out. While we're doing this, I'm just going to, always a good idea to keep your portafilter in. Like I mentioned the other day, don't crank them in when they're heating. You know, you're just going to hurt your gasket. And, you know, if you let the machine cool down, it might get, you might get your basket stuck up in there. So we'll go back to, let's see, I guess you can see that over here. Yep. So we're going to go back to the little Pixis scale here. Fun little scale. Put my cup on there. Make sure that's teared out. Go back to the... Uh, Ethiopian uh, Yurgachev here and get 20 grams again. Again, not losing a single bean doing it this way. And I'm at 19.5. I'm going to get exactly 20. Okay. 19.94 grams. That's, that's not bad. Again, we're going to give it the spray um, here. And I like to stir. Shake that around just to distribute that moisture in there. Again, this helps with any static. You know, if you've got a grinder with some static, um, you can always use a, some spray or a wet finger like this um, to get rid of that. I'll bring it back to the main camera here. Uh, let's see, I got my portafilter, got my funnel. And again with this, let's turn the grinder on. Dump our beans, that's why I like this funnel, fits perfectly in here, I really like that a lot. I'm just listening again for the, uh, for all the beans to be done. Then blowing it out. And this, this is amazing. Usually, you know, if you were putting a 20 gram dose in here, you'll get 19.8, 19.9, sometimes right on 20 because you're adding a little bit of water. And it weighs that 0.1 gram maybe per spray. Let's let that settle a little bit. Make sure my leveler is clean. And I'll take it back over here. You see that. And just set it in. Give it the spin. Okay. Load that up. I just want to make sure I get this right. So I'm going to reference my <laughs> profile chart here. Bear with me. I'll bring it back front. So this is uh, what I, I like with this. I call it a sweet bump. So it's a low flow to start. It's going to be a half a turn. I'm going to make sure I'm all the way closed, just go a half a turn. And then about, at about 15 seconds, I'm going to bump it up to one full turn for five, and then come back to a half to finish. Again, as, as I see this happening, I can adjust the flow if it's looking a little too fast, um, and maybe discover something else with a coffee. So I'm at that half a turn. And again, I'm going to run this for 15 seconds. And that's probably about when we're going to start seeing some, some drip, is it about 15 seconds. I'm not concerned at all with time too much now. And it, oh, it came a little faster, just like the other one. My grind changed just a little bit. 
And I'm at 15, so now I'm going to bump it up to 1 for 5, and whoa, that one went way too fast. So now I see what's happening. My grind got a little too much, and I'm, at, I'm way over. So you know what? That's what happens sometimes, right? Um, so I'm going to adjust my grind a little finer for that. Now I might have had a problem with the puck there or something. I'm going to take a look at it. Let's see, well, no obvious channels, so... I'm going to just fine, turn this grind a little finer and see what we can do with that. So we'll wipe, wipe that out. Luckily I have plenty of shot glasses here. So I went about another three quarter turn on the fineness here. So the coffee has changed a little bit since I was working with it a few hours ago. Could be something else going on. So I'm going to weigh out my 20 again. Oh, I sacrificed one bean. And there we are, right, right at 20. Again, I'll give it the spray again here. Let's see if we don't do a little better this time. A little stir and shake in the cup. And I, I lost one more bean. That's about maybe a few, few, maybe a tenth of a gram, but that's close enough. Okay, so I'll make sure this is clean. Funnel back. Turn this guy on. Let me pull you in closer again here. Make sure I don't have any extra there. And one nice thing with the uh, single dosing grinder, when you change grind size, no need to purge. Okay, good there. So that's good. And also with single dosing, when you change grind size, you know, you're weighing beforehand, so you don't have to compensate if you're grinding by time. I wonder, I'm going to take my leveler just a little tighter here. All right, let's see how we do this time. Lock in. So based on the last one, I'm going to go just a little less than half a turn to start here. And then at 15 seconds, and it's still coming a little bit faster than I'd like, so I'm going to bring it down just a bit. And I'm going to take that up for a sec. And now back down. I'm going to really reduce the flow rate at the end here, and we're good there. So I'm a little bit over, so I'm at 45 grams, so a little over my 1 to 2 ratio. But I'll bet you this is, well, I didn't even taste the last one. But I'll bet you it's going to be better than the first. I'll bring it back front. Oh yeah, <laughs> there's, there's a real sweetness after it gets back on the tongue a little bit. So that one wasn't really perfect. Again, if I was to do this shot again, I'd, I'd probably turn my grind a little finer and I'd probably reduce my flow, flow rate even a little bit more. I've seen that come a lot slower. One of the things I usually look for is you know, to, to see uh, the espresso start coming at about 15 seconds. Uh, if I was doing bottomless shots, I'd, I'd look for it to just develop then. So I think my grind is a little too coarse with this. Um, but it did definitely just, giving it that little, that low flow to start and then a little bump in the middle and then back down, really seemed to help it a little bit. Oh yeah. M much better than the standard one. Um, so there's that. So again, that's, that's the flow profile device. I'm going to look at like some of the questions here. It is really, incon and that is really inconvenient to turn this little lever like more than 360 degrees. <laughs> yeah, then Josh, uh, you know, it's, it's not bad at all. You get very, very used to it here. Um, 
you know, I'm, I'm doing it all the time. And it gives you some really fine control, you know, if you're into really, you know, really precise flow rates. Of course, you know, if you really want to get, go big time, you know, you go with something like the Mina, which is going to do this, control your flow rate, second by second, programmable. Um, but then again, that machine costs probably, I don't know, two and a half times what this does, maybe three times. Um, but you can see, you know, just how little you're changing the flow rate here. Um, I don't know if you can really see that, but at a quarter turn, I'm at 2.4 grams per second. At a half, I'm at 4.2 at three quarters. 6.9 at one full turn 8.8 .8, up to one and a quarter the stock flow rate of a rotary pump machine um, it's going to get you about 11 grams per second so it does allow you some really fine control and you know it, one thing is you know while you're running a shot is you can say oh I'm, I'm going way too fast so let me slow that down um, so you can do that as you're watching the shot in fact you know Dan from home barista left a, a comment um, you know what a lot of people will do is base their flow changes on the weight in the cup. And, you know, as you do this more and more, you know, you, you'll kind of get an idea just by watching it what it is. And if you have a scale, uh, you can certainly do that. It might be an easier way to go. Um, and then get in. We do, I do like to go by time. That way I can, you know, say, oh, you know, maybe I should have done that five seconds earlier this time or five seconds later or, or that kind of thing. But just being able to really adjust the flow as the shot is extracting is, is really something. Um, let me check and see if we have any more questions here. And Josh, yeah, I am pretty well caffeinated. And it is warm in here today. I can't have the air on. And I do, excuse me, do have lights. Um, let's see. Just looking through here. Any special procedure with flow control for back flush from squib cakes? And squib, I talk to you on a regular basis. Um, no, not really. I would just suggest that you open it up to, you know, the standard flow rate. So like on the Pro 700 here, that's one and a quarter turns, and that's going to get you the standard. Um, you know, I would back flush as regu regular as you would. Um, I'd also, you know, water, the water quality is very important always. Um, said I'm using my machines plumbed in through a BWT filter um, so I'm getting a, a water quality it's got enough of the minerals they, what it does is switches out some calcium for magnesium so you have enough minerals there to present prevent over extractions but yet not to the level that you're going to create any scale you know BWT says that if you use their filters um, you will not cause scale it gives you that water quality and of course it's got you know the pre-filtration and the carbon filtration for chlorine and, and other chemicals and that kind of thing in there um, let me just take a quick look at see if there's any other questions. When will you, will you offer this as an upgrade? Well, I, I did, uh, it is going to be available as an upgrade. So the problem is right now, um, that, you know, and I talked to, we talked to Michael this morning. Um, so they do have the actual flow control device. What they're short on right now, which is made in Italy, is the pressure gauges, and they don't want to send them out without the pressure gauges. So they're waiting on things to return to, you know, more normalcy in Italy so that the pressure gauges are available and then we'll have more. Again, these have been really, really popular um, in high demand. Um, so we will have upgrades, you know, and we have definitely used them on the, uh, all the Profitech and ECM machines. In fact, I've got a Classica. I took this one off an ECM Classica, a PID single boiler machine that's sitting back over here. Um, this morning so I could you know show it to you out of a machine um, but we it's available on that right now it's available on the Profitech uh, Pro 500 uh, which is the heat exchange boiler vibration pump machine and their Pro 600 which is a compact dual boiler machine um, with a vibration pump and uh, on the like the ECM Synchronica and the Pro 600 and the Pro 700 they all have that steam pressure upgrade uh, with a two bar pressure that we worked with on Profitech and ECM a couple of years ago. So, I'm going to make one more check of uh, questions here. And I, yeah, I guess that was from Brett. Um, so, there we go. I think, let's see, what time are we at? Okay, well, we're getting close to 147, so about 47 minutes in. Um, I do appreciate you guys watching. Again, if you're interested in some more profiles um, and the difference it can really make, do check out, there's a link down in the description for this video for my video where I did five individual profiles, um, the five different profiles. And again, you can use those as starting points. So 
for now, thanks for watching. I, I really do appreciate it. And I will be monitoring the uh, comments both you know, here on YouTube, uh, on Home Barista, and our thread in the marketplace there. Look for Whole Latte Love live streams. We will be back uh, next week, Tuesday and Thursday, uh, with some more live streams. Thursday is going to be on the water filtration. And Tuesday, on, we'll take a look at a bunch of different grinders, choosing an espresso grinder. I've got you know, a couple really, really nice ones here. These are big flapper, 83 millimeter, uh, prosumer level grinders. But we'll, we'll start off with some high-end appliance grade and you know, see what you might look for in a grinder, those kinds of things. So do appreciate you watching. Have a great weekend. And I hope everybody's doing well wherever you are. Uh, and we'll see you back here at Whole Latte Love for more. Those live streams next week, Tuesday and Thursday at 1. And of course, you know, do check out our channel for a lot more. I've done like a thousand videos over the last 10 years on different coffee things. So again, thanks for watching. Really do appreciate and we'll see you soon.